So today we'll be taking a look at the Essentials IPCC TV bundle. This bundle comes complete with a 9 channel NVR, a 5 port switch with 4 ports PoE and an external bullet camera with night vision. Also on display here for the purposes of the demonstration I've got the 22 inch LED HDMI monitor, 4 HD and our broadband router that we'll be connecting everything through. So the NVR in the kit supports up to 9 cameras uh, each camera can be up to 1080p 4HD with the bundle you get the one camera and the four port switch to this you can, add, you can easily add another three cameras to give you a, a total of four cameras we do have a separate bundle which comes with everything exactly the same except for the uh, the switch which comes as a, a nine port switch with eight ports PoE which will allow you to easily add eight cameras onto there. So the recorder itself is a fairly small unit so it'll be nice and at, uh, nice and at home at um, pretty much anywhere you want to put it. Um, whether it's domestic or commercial it, it slots in quite nicely and it's fairly silent as well which is quite important. The switch itself, as I say, is a, uh, a five port switch with four ports of PoE. That PoE will directly power the camera, it will line feed it uh, through Cat5 cable, uh, which we recommend for, for the installation. The camera itself, I'll just pick that up so you get a better look at it, is a mini bullet with night vision infrared LEDs on there. That will allow up to 30 meters of infrared night vision. Again, it's a full HD unit, so it's completely um, it's completely at home on a, on a full HD television um, and it will give you a fantastic picture as well, albeit upside down at the moment. Um, line fed, uh, the power is line fed directly from the switch as I say, so there's, it's literally just one cable going between the switch and the, uh, and the camera. Now to connect everything together, um, what you might have noticed is the switch in, the, in this case is separate to the recorder. Um, a lot of recorders you'll see on the market do have a switch integrated into them. There's no particular uh, benefit of doing it one way or the other really. Um, th this particular kit, as I say, comes with the separate switch, so it's a couple of more cables, but it's, it's no big hassle really. So the way we've got it connected together is the camera is connected, as you can see, via this, uh, this Cat5 cable directly into one of the PoE ports on the switch which is flashing for us. Um, if you wanted to add more cameras you just add those into the, uh, the additional three PoE ports on there. You then have an uplink port which is a non-PoE port so that will go back via this Cat5 cable here um, and that goes into the back of your broadband router so whether you're on Sky, BT, uh, Virgin, anyone like that you'll have a router like this and in the back of there you'll have multiple ports to connect that's what's going off to our ADSL line and uh, then you have the various different devices plugged into the back one of those being the PoE switch additionally we've got the network port on the back of the recorder there again that's just an RJ45 Cat5 patch lead going straight back you can see it's got a status light that's flashing there that's going straight back again and then just popped into one of the three ports on the switch so most switches have four ports on them uh, most broadband sorry switch most uh, broadband routers have four ports on them so you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to connect plenty of devices into there Regarding the wiring of the system, um, I did touch upon the fact earlier that the switch is separate to the recorder. Um, some recorders on the market have integrated switches uh, which will allow you to wire all the cameras straight into the back of the recorder. Um, and other systems like this one have uh, a, a separate switch with a single network port on the recorder itself. Um, a lot of the time it's down to personal preference how you, how you prefer to wire it, whether you prefer to bring all the cameras back to the recorder or the cameras to a separate switch there's no particular technical benefit to, to, to doing it either way. Um, obviously historically with CCTV systems when it was analogue and, and coax systems the cameras would all come back to the recorder so, so that's probably what a lot of people are used to. Um, the main benefit of having a separate switch that's, that's external of the DVR itself um, would be the fact that you can wire all of your cameras to that one switch and then take a single cable back down from the switch to your NVR. Um, so if you take for example a domestic installation where it's a house, um, if you have four cameras on the outside of the building you can take all of your cameras, the wiring from all of the cameras back to a single switch in the loft or somewhere nice and out of the way 
um, and then you can take one single cable back from that switch just back to the recorder whether that's in somebody's living room or, or in a bedroom or, or anywhere around the house it's a lot less invasive uh, with the cabling um, as, a, as compared to something where you've got to bring four cables back into someone's living room or someone's bedroom or something like that so it can be a real benefit to have a separate switch um, and that, that's, that's part of what makes this system quite nice. Supported on the on the recorder, you have P2P networking, so there's no uh, there's no port forwarding to do, there's no DDNS to set up. It's literally a case of pop the app onto your phone. We'll go through that a little bit later. Scan the QR code and uh, and off you go, kind of thing. Uh, so that's nice and easy. There's no DDNS, um, as I say, no port forwarding, anything like that. Nothing too complicated to set up. Um, so, and that's that's it in a nutshell, really. Uh, all comes in in nice presentation packaging as well, which is uh, which is a bonus. If you did want to add additional cameras, as I say, it's just a case of, of popping them into those PoE ports um, and just wiring them back through Cat5. That's up to 100 meters over that Cat5, and you'll uh, you'll keep your PoE and everything like that. So with the kit, as I say, you get the NVR, which is this unit here. Uh, you get the um, the switch, the uh, the four port, the five, sorry, the four port switch, uh, four port PoE, one port uplink, and you get the uh, you get the infrared camera as well. So it's uh, it's a nice starter bundle that you can add to quite easily. As I say, for the purpose of the demonstration, um, I'm using our 22-inch HDMI monitor, which is a nice unit, nice looking unit, flat screen, um, fits anywhere, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can wall mount it as well, it's got Visa wall mount on there too, so that's a pretty good unit. So what I'll do is I'll take you through the, the basics of the uh, of the recorder. I'll just show you the menu system and I'll, uh, I'll factory default it and show you how to add a camera on. Uh, it's just really straightforward, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so let's do that now. So you do get the mouse with the uh, with the bundle as well. You get a power supply for the recorder as well. Uh, you get the power supply for the switch too. So it's, it's pretty much what you need to get started kind of thing. The only thing you don't get is a HDMI lead to go between the recorder and your monitor um, but you know HDMI leads are, are fairly cheap to pick up we can provide them or you can you know, you've probably got one lying around um, so we'll just go through the, uh, the menu system of the DVR we're using the mouse to, uh, to do that so this is the, the basic screen you can flick that down to split screen to password protector the standard password is 1 to 5 2 3 and then just hit login and from there then you can you can split the screens however you want to. I've only just got the one camera at the moment, up to nine screens. Or you can give a, a single window there. Uh, one of the really nice features of this DVR, and I'll show you that in a, in a little while, is that you can make it boot up to any, any split screen that you like between one, uh, four or nine. Um, so if you've only got the four cameras connected, even though it's a nine channel unit, you can make it just boot up on four screens so it's, you're not showing additional unwanted screens. Similarly, if you've just got the one camera, you can make it boot up onto a single screen so you're not getting that split screen whatsoever. All changeable, obviously, as, as you're using it. Uh, so from there you've got Pol, which is uh, a seat, an auto sequencer that will go through the cameras one at a time. You've got your volume, turn it up and down obviously. Record setup, it does what it says on the tin, that's how you set the frame rate and everything like that to record. PTZ setup doesn't really apply, but if you were adding PTZ cameras onto the system, they are supported through the OnViv protocol. Uh, image colour, you can just change the brightness and the contrast and everything like that. Playback is where obviously where you will, will play back recorded footage. Remote devices, the camera setup. So there, you quick get to uh, menu items, or you can delve into the main menu there. So it's fairly nicely laid out, uh, nice and simple. Again, across the top, you've got operate, playback, file backup if you want to do it to a USB stick or something like that too, to take away and save for future reference. And you've got shut down where you can restart the unit or shut it down. Um, system information, system log, that'll give you events and, uh, and things like that. So motion detection and alarm events if you have them. Camera setup, that's where you'll add your cameras into the system. You can also, you've also got a degree of um, alterations that you can make to the camera picture and frame rates and whatnot as well. Network is where you'll set IP addresses or if like 99% of setups, you've got a DHCP server on site, either built into your, your standard broadband route a bit from Sky or Virgin or BT or, or something a bit more complex, then, uh, then you can set that in there and it will automatically give your recorder a, an IP address. Uh, setup events again. That's for setting up things like motion detection, video loss, and whatnot, telling it what to do in those events. 
Uh, you've got a storage set up where you set your hard drive, you can just view it from there. Uh, you can set up your recording uh, and everything from there. The system is set up to record out of the box, so you don't really need to touch that if you're not too worried about it. You can go to disk and you can see the size of the disk you've got there. Uh, this particular one's got a 500 gig hard drive in it, but uh, the, the main kit usually comes with a, a one terabyte, so you get double this amount of disk space. You can highlight it and format it from there as well. And then you've got the system where you get uh, various different uh, options that you can go through, so you have language, I wouldn't recommend changing it usually. Uh, record mode, set it to overwrite, it'll obviously overwrite when it gets to the end of, of the recording, sorry, of the hard drive capacity. Record days, you know, if you only wanted to record 15 days or 10 days or 7 days at a time, you can set it in there. Most people would leave that alone. Um, video standard power, leave it alone. Standby time uh, in minutes, that's if you have a password protected menu. Um, if you, Once you've logged in, after 10 minutes of inactivity, it will knock back to, to asking for the password again. And you can give the device a name. You've also got your date set up too. So in everything in there, you've got you can do uh, NTP, so it will pick up its time uh, directly from a from an NTP server. So lots of uh, lots of options basically to go through. I won't go through all of them because it's a bit too much to to go through on this on this video, to be honest. So um, yeah, most of them you won't even need to touch. In all honesty, it's uh, it does kind of record out of the box. So what I'll do is I'll do a full system reset uh, and I'll show you how to add a camera into the system um, and just to get it up and running kind of thing. So to do the reset we'll go to uh, system and we'll click restore default. Take the top box, I'll check everything and restore the factory settings. Hit apply there and that's going to ask me to confirm and I'll do that and it will reboot the unit. So when it reboots the unit, it sets literally everything back to, uh, to factory default, so all the IP addressing that was set up uh, will be gone. The cameras that were programmed into it will be gone as well, so, uh, so it's, it's literally from the start kind of thing. <clears throat> it takes just a minute or so to boot. So there we go, so the system's booted back up now. And what you get when you boot the system for the first time is this, uh, this nice easy uh, boot wizard, which will take you through all the steps that you need to get up and running. So what you'll do to start with is you'll untick the box that says start set a wizard automatically, and then it won't ask you next time. Go to the next step, the password, one to five. That's two. Enter that, log in. Okay, so then you'll have a few options to go through, so just double check over everything. So start with the language, obviously English, uh, record mode, overwrite, record days, no limit, that's fine. We'll set it to PAL, I don't think it really matters with IP, but uh, we'll set it to PAL anyway, just for the sake of having it. Go to the date setup, I'll tell it to receive from the NTP, so it'll just pick up its time automatically, that's fine. Uh, and then I'll go to the, I'll hit apply on there, and then I'll go to the next step. Okay, so it's not on DHCP to begin with, so it will just be with a, uh, a standard IP address. So I'd probably normally recommend, unless you really know what you're doing with IP addresses, is to set it onto DHCP mode. So just hit the box there, DHCP, and then just go to the next step. That will now get its, its own IP address directly from your broadband router or your DHCP server or whatever, whatever you have on site to, uh, to, get that, to get that IP address in. So I'll just uh, make sure I take down and then go to the next step. Okay, automatic network mode or manual network mode. This is to do with the cameras. So normally I would probably leave that on manual network mode because you've got your camera connected into the switch, which is then connected into the, the router, which is acting as the DHCP server. Your camera will pick up a, an IP address automatically from that. So it'll all, be, it'll all be ready to go kind of thing. So I'd always leave that just on manual uh, so you can add them in yourself. Okay, that takes us to the camera search menu. So it's really easy to use from here. So what you need to do is first off click search. That will show you all the available IP devices on your network. We happen to have three here. I know that we've got two more around the building dotted around. Um, and I happen to know that the particular camera I'm using here uses port 8999. If you've got just the IP cameras from this kit on your system, um, you'll only show the IP cameras that are there, however many they are. But um, as I say, we've got various different things set up, so uh, I'm just going to use the one that we've got. So I'm going to highlight it, I'm just going to click out, and that's going to send it into the bottom half of the menu for me. Because it's a ProView camera, um, and it's an Essentials DVR, which are from the same manufacturer, um, the, um, 
the password and everything is already known by the recorder and it knows kind of what the device name and the device type is so it's, it all talks to each other very nicely you can add in uh, other onvif 2.4 compatible cameras um, but you might have to just go in and, and take a look, quick look at the password setup um, which you would do through the the edit menu there so you just tap on that um, make sure your protocol set to onvif make sure that your uh, username and your password are correct and obviously your port as well um, but as I say, with, with ProView cameras, uh, it, it picks it up straight away automatically, so it's no problem. So I'm just going to hit confirm on there. Um, so there you have all the settings there, so I'm just going to go to the next step. You can see there the camera's appeared up in the top left-hand corner already. So I'll go to the next step. That's the record menu. Uh, you do have a nice graphical kind of interface for it, but what you can do is click this little cog there. I mean, it's just set up to record straight out of the box as it comes, you know, 24-7. Um, but you can have different schedules and everything like that as well. So you can choose just certain days or all days or whatever um, at the minute if you stick it on all and it's just zero to 2400 hours set to record. So that will just record straight out of the box. Off you go. You don't have to touch that really. So we'll go to the next step. Oh, and that's that's all the steps. So we'll just hit OK on there. So that's it now. That's, that's the system set up. The camera's added in. Uh, the date and time are being pulled through uh, through the internet. Um, and then if we double click the camera there you can see that the camera's time and date is reflective of the DVR's time and date as well. You can see that we've got a little uh, camera icon down there, that means it's recording. Uh, and that's it in a nutshell really, so no matter what happens from there, you know, if you unplug your camera or you get a power cut or anything like that, it's um, the camera will come back on. So I mentioned earlier the, uh, the easy network setup via the P2P, which removes the need for DDNS and port forwarding through the router and, uh, and everything that's, that's particularly complicated about networking. Um, so I'm just going to take you through that now through the downloading of the app, um, through to programming the details into the app and connecting and viewing your cameras uh, via a phone. Now the system supports um, Apple devices such as the iPad and iPhone as well as Android devices such as uh, Samsung or LG or, or anyone like that. Um, so we're going to be using an iPhone for the for the purposes of this uh, of this demonstration. So the first thing I'll do is I'll pop into the network menu on the DVR and I will show the uh, the um, the way to download the app. To the network menu and into P2P. So you can see there you get uh, you get three QR codes. You get one with the, the serial number of the unit. One with a download for the Android app and one with a download for the iOS app. Um, now the app is called Free IP. It's freely available on the uh, the Google Play Store as well as the uh, the, the Apple App Store. Um, you can search for it straight on there, or you can use a barcode scanning program uh, on your on your smartphone to uh, to scan the app from here. Um, so if I just go onto my iPhone. And the app that uh, that I like to use is called Red Laser. It's freely available on the App Store and it's really useful for. Uh, loads of different things. Um, so I'm just going to tap the little scan button there and that's going to come with the scanner and I'm going to scan the iOS um, QR code. So I've done that and it's asking me if I want to open this URL which goes straight to the, uh, the Apple App Store so I'm going to say yes. Now that takes us to the, the app page which is uh, as I said it's free IP. Um, as I say, you can search it straight through there, or you can you can just do it. It's already on this phone, so I'm just going to hit open. But uh, if you don't have it, just hit get or download or whatever uh, whatever it says on your app store. So I'm going to open that free IP app from there. So we're we're on there. Uh, so you get the login screen. You can register an account and store multiple sites on there. But if uh, if your customer is only using one site, or if you're only using one site, um, you may as well just hit the SN login button, um, and that will take you to. Uh, a simple login screen. So from there again you get SN login uh, and you can see you've got another scan uh, button there and we'll use that to scan the serial number QR code in the DVR network menu. So that's scanned that there and it's added the serial number in for us. We'll put the username in. Um, so it's admin with a lowercase a. Eh? And the password, obviously we've not changed it, so the default password is going to be the 1 to 5. If I can enter it right. So that's there, and I'm going to hit login. That's just loading up now. So you can see what we've got there. Uh, it's brought up the camera in the very top left-hand corner. So I can double-tap the button there 
um, and that will bring it up full screen. You've got down the left hand side of the screen there, you've got four, nine uh, buttons that are highlighted. You can't use the 16, 25 and 36 because obviously this, this recorder won't support it. Um, but you can hit the four and it will go to a four split screen. If you had four cameras it would show them all and then hit nine and that will go to the nine split screen. Obviously if you had all of them it would show them all. So that's that. So when you finish with that network menu you can come straight out of there just by right clicking back to the, the normal screen. So when we're on the app, on the phone there, uh, it's very, very, very similar on the uh, on the Android uh, user interface, on the Android app, so uh, no need to worry about showing you both. Um, so we're on there. Um, what we can do from there is we can play back. Hit the button, it'll think about it for a second. And then you can see that you can, you can play back from any of the recorded footage that's already on there. It's a really easy time slide uh, kind of thing. Um, so you can see there somebody was walking through the door, but they're not, so it's obviously playing back. Uh, you can choose the time that, that you want to view through that through the slider there, or you can hit the calendar, uh, and you can choose any particular date that you like to play back from. There's not a lot on here on this recorder because I've just set it up uh, for the purpose of this demonstration. So, uh, so there we go. That will find it. Anything that you want to find. Uh, so when you're done, just hit the back button, and that will take you out of there. It will save the details, you've got a little save checkbox there, um, so next time you come to it just hit SN login again uh, and just hit the login button, uh, which is that one. And again up, up it will pop. Now again there was no port forwarding to do that, there's no DDNS set up, that's literally the steps that you need to take as long as you have the recorder. Uh, connected up into your network or into your broadband router. Um, that's that's all the setup you need to do. Uh, so I just hit the home button on the phone there, and you can see. If we'll show, yeah, I'm just on 4G there. The Wi-Fi is switched off. Um, so you can see, yeah, the Wi-Fi is off there. So there's no, it's not locally. It's also going over the internet to get to to get to the recorder. And that's as easy as it is to uh, to network this system.